everyone, my name is Pelescent Marina and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 10, Episode 10. As you might have noticed, I have been eating pork chops for a little while now, specifically sourced from Tango's Hogland Farm in the Nether. But it's time to throw these things back in a chest because we now have a full shulker box of golden carrots. This is insane. Introductions were given to XB for his Ether installed mailbox and he decided to pay a little bit of kindness to the proceeds. Boom. Ooh. Treats for the postmaster. <gasps> Golden carrots. Wait, how, how, how much? How much can I have? Yes. Wait. What? 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 You, are, are you telling me I can? I can, I can, I can are you tell me I can take the shulker XP? Or Why is the box still there, Pearl? Okay. Pearl. Okay. I'm gonna say I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm a very happy postmaster indeed. You need something mailed. I got See? you. I got you. You know, you want to uh -huh. send something bigger See, than, just... a, than a package. I got you, you know. Oh, boy. Keep me in mind later. You know, that's all I'm saying. Okay. You're the only right. one that's given me a present. I appreciate that, you know. Bring, right. You got to treat people right. Oh. I don't know what all these other people are doing. Oh. But that is so lovely. There's plenty more where that came from. Ooh. So I say we could probably give some of these to Ether if you need some well-deserved food at any point, but thank you very much XB for that. Oh boy. However, although I'm a bunch of carrots richer, I'm also a bit richer in deaths. Adding four to my tally after a few exciting fights with the dragon to open some of those small portals to the outer end. Maybe explosive rockets aren't really my cup of tea. I'm ready, let's do it. Dang it, no, I don't have good. a good sword. Dang it. Oh, oh no, oh. Joe. One time. Oh, wow. Joe, okay, I'm on, back, yeah, wait, I'm on my I'll way back. Yeah, I'm on my way back. I'll wait, I'll wait. How did that happen? <laughs> I don't think I looked at him. Uh. <laughs> Joe, poor I, Joe. The, okay, I didn't bring a good sword because I was like, well, we're not going to use the swords on the dragons, so. No. Impulse. Impulse. I killed myself. Oh, Impulse, no. get out of the, get out of the thing. It's going to regen. Impulse, you're going to be. Yeah, there was. I was not prepared. Dude. Oh, here we go. Oh, Get it. Okay. oh, that's so that's pretty. Funny. Yeah! There it is! Nice! <laughs> oh, I shot an enderman. My bad! Ah! No, it's over. Oh, it's not. Okay. I did that thing of fly away. Ah, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you. you did the same thing I did. Oh, whoops. Can I borrow someone's bottles to get the achievement? <laughs> yeah, I want to get the achievement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here you go, Pearl. Here's a like that. Too. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'll give them to you afterwards. Let me some breath, dragon. <laughs> Breathe in my face. Please. <laughs> give it ass, thank you, <laughs> I just hope, <laughs> hope she hasn't had any onions yeah. recently. It's burning, it's burning. <laughs> oh, man. Get wrecked, dragon. Ready everything right now. Oh, okay. oh, oh fine. Good reflexes. I'm fine. <laughs> Damn me. It's a miss. It, it is hard. It's pretty it's hard flying. to shoot them, yeah. yeah. When it perches, though, we line well, up pretty good. Uh oh. How much XP did you lose, Impulse? 728 levels. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Oh. Come on. Where were you? I was standing on top of the pillar after getting my stuff. <laughs> you blew the crystal in my face. Are these, they flew are right these at rockets me. you gave me cover, they like maximum damage possible. Yeah, for flight duration two, yeah. Oh, I made them flight been. duration two so they'd reach upwards a little bit more. But yeah, otherwise they're max. Oh no! no, 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 no. <laughs> I did indeed lose my pants yet again, which I did enchant to full with swift sneak. So now we're on to my third set of pants. And honestly, I didn't think I'd be the one out of everyone to be changing my pants so frequently, but here we are. Now, last episode, we also worked on the skeleton farm and got the bone block shop set up. In that very episode, I concluded that I was not smart enough to set up the auto crafters for it, but I did find a certain back from vacation tango that absolutely had the right brain cells for the task. But you know, I'm kind of a little bit skint on those brain cells, so I couldn't really let him go without stealing some of those myself. Redstone might be a little bit fun to learn after all, who knows what we could use that knowledge for, the power that we might hold. Hmm? Okay, so I got my little output system right here, right? Okay. So it, it was, dude, it's just, it's just a little singular spawner farm. I get to AFK here and it, you know, it does the thing where it kills the skellies. Uh -huh. uh, so I just want it to make bones automatically. 
Um, bone, bone blocks, Bone blocks right? automatically, yeah. Yeah, not one okay. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, ha- I got a little oh, redstone box go. here. Got a okay. whole bunch of crafters. We got comparators as well, which you'll probably need. Excellent. So we have to first turn the bones into bone meal mm-hmm. and then... Turn the bone meal into... All right, so we're going to need block. Yeah. Uh, technically, we've also got to filter out the arrows, right? So they don't uh, end up going into it. I don't care. I'm going to have to yeah. charge you for this. It's getting expensive. You charge me? I thought, I thought it was right, the same right, right, charge, right. man. Come on. All right, all right. Let's make a little bit more room here, then. Yeah. Am I safe to break stuff? Yeah, you're all good. Uh, just be careful of the bubble vader that's somewhere there. I'm, I'm watching a master at work here. <laughs> There's a reason I don't do redstone live, all right? <laughs> oh, it's fine. You got this. Oh, gosh. Oh. Hey! <laughs> then the item split hey. a discombobulator. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm going to need some hoppers. Yep. Got some of those bad boys. Are you proud of my redstone box? Cool. I, I am, I'm just going to compliment you on it. This is impressive here, yeah. actually. I, I do want to learn right, redstone a bit more. So this is very uh, I would intriguing. love to have Etho teach you. Yeah. Have <laughs> ether tea tree. So cool. I'm getting a okay. uh, solo experience right now. It's not going to happen again. That's what you're saying. It might. It might. We'll see. <laughs> you're going to regret this. Ah, uh, no regret. <laughs> I'm fascinated. This is why, like, I'm glad I, like, I was like, okay, I'm going to attempt to make this farm. And then I stared at it and I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe I don't know how to we're make very, this very thing. We're very, very close. Yeah, we're very, very close. <laughs> We're working on oh, it. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Uh, so, when and there's that nothing in do. that, it'll de- deactivate the uh, observers. Correct. That's see really just, smart. See how it just turned off. Okay, so th- these two together detect when there is one singular boat in here, and that's when it decides to activate this. Right. So, a crafter uh, gives off a signal based on how many slots are used. Mm-hmm. If you lock a slot in there, so like you can click on slots to lock them, which basically says, items should never go into these slots that's yep. how you can kind of like form the recipes you know that right mm-hmm. yep okay so the the signal that the comparator gives off of is a combination of slots that are locked plus slots that are filled so this one here that i'm standing on is already giving off a signal of eight and only when it gets the bone does it give a signal of nine right that makes sense okay yeah this one here is if you see the slots that are locked is always giving off a signal of eight and because these some uh, this comparator here is on subtract mode. That little light is on. Yeah. It's basically saying, you know, eight minus eight all the time is zero. But when the bone comes in, it's nine minus eight. Okay. And then it, gives, it actually gives off a signal to power the piston. Ah, right. Okay. And then simply having a comparator to detect when something's in there, what kind of problem would that cause? Like without having the other... You're, you're probably this. right, actually. We probably could do... Yeah, do I'm we... afraid of, of, of speed issues. Like we could probably just do this, right? Yeah, like we just have the one. maybe take this out. Yeah, right, have it on we'll regular mode. Works. Yeah. I was just afraid that the bones would come in faster than the... You know, turn them into bone meal, but we'll see here in okay. a second. If I if I lock all of these slots like this, uh-huh. then bones can oh. only go in the first slot, and therefore, it's uh, this is constantly it, going off. Right? Okay, I I understand. I see. Okay, so this is constantly going off because this is like it's detecting that the stuff already in it. It's giving out a signal. Yes. That's what you're so saying. So now ah. it's back to the original way. Now it's back to the you know eight minus eight. Okay, intriguing. And then on this side Let's with get the. To the uh, yeah, this is just yeah. a standard sorter. Do you understand how that works? So we got the comparator that's detecting when something's in the hopper and it's giving off a certain signal strength that's circulating right. around and it locks the hopper on the other side. But how does it... It's The items in so there are hopper, counting too, right? The one that, yeah, the 41 bones in there. Yeah, right, so they the, give off a certain extra strength. filler items. Yeah. That's giving off a signal strength of two. Uh-huh. The second that one more bone goes in there yeah it'll give off a signal strength of three and unlocks the, the dust down here which then powers the repeater uh-huh. which then this torch down here on the bottom yeah will turn that off and then yeah unlocks that- the hopper below it which allows right. just one bone to go down in there Oh, that makes sense now. I've been like making sorters for a little bit, uh, you know, after like, watching tutorials. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah, just yeah. like, I just copy it. I'm like, I don't understand how you this don't know functions. How they work, but yeah. But no, this, yeah. okay, signal strength makes so much more sense. I understand that now. Ah. And of course, when an arrow goes by, an arrow can't go into that hopper below because there's no room for it because it can only be stone or bones. Stone or bone, yeah. So it just passes right by and goes across. Oh, okay. Now I understand. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you for taking the time to, to make this and sure. help explain, too. This is good. So seriously, a huge thank you to the amazing... Oh, there it goes. 
the amazing Tango of the Tech variety for setting up this. It is now fully automatic and already generating some lovely bone blocks. It is going to be so much easier to keep my uh, shop restocked with that now set up. Absolutely lovely. Now, speaking of, let's actually go check up on our shop to see if we have any profits. There she is in all her lovely glory. Hello, hello. Have we made any sales? Nothing in that one. We got two Dibbity Diamonds in this one, looking lovely. Okay, check a few of the other ones. I don't think anyone would be buying from this side, but we do have to check it anyway. And okay. Well, two diamonds it is. You know, it's it's not much, but it's, a, it's, it's something, right? We've made some kind of diamonds from our shop, and it's only a starter shop, and it's only bone blocks. I can't imagine it's a super, super popular item in the shopping district, but uh, hey, we've got something to our name. And you know what? While I'm here, I'm actually going to pop a little bit of a visit to a red shop specifically this big one over here and of course as you can see it's selling beacons the very thing that i need right now for today's episode i'd really love to actually pop a little bit of a focus back to the base and work on getting the sniffer farm running for our flower shop Yep. and in the process of course focusing on that solar punk theme now solar punk focuses on living alongside and harnessing nature with advanced futuristic tech and i need to add that aspect to the production of our farm life and these lovely beacons right here, I'm feeling like they can absolutely add to that aesthetic direction that I'm aiming for in our decor. And check it on the price. Um, fly me. <laughs> it's expensive maybe, but worth it, right? I'm crying through the build of pain. It's, it's fine. Two diamond blocks, fly me, Ren. Okay, we, it's fine. It's a beacon. It's all good. I've got diamond blocks. You know, I've been going mining. It, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Now, I'm actually going to need four of these as well. So that's going to send us back a, a lovely eight diamond blocks. Ouch. Okay, but it's fine. It's fine. Now that we've done that, though, and spent our fair share of diamonds in the shopping district, let's get back home before I spend even more and end up with nothing left. I reckon I am ready as I can be today to get myself into finally fixing the backside of that most recent expansion that we did and also solving that big open space that we had into the sniffer area. If I can just get over here, yoink. There we go. Look at that. It's all big and open. We need to cover that up, add some walls in and make it look nice because at the moment, <sighs> All of you being as excited as you are with the solar punk theme also makes me super excited to give this all a solid go and it is time to dive in properly. If we look at the roof here in the past, I don't know if I showed it too well, but we didn't have any glass on the roof here before and this is something new I've decided to add just to kind of experiment with adding a bit more light and airy feel to the actual structures themselves. Adding more skylights like these is really going to give us that kind of skylight exposure from the inside that I think we really need for a theme such as this one. And look, oh, it's so lovely up there. If I can actually get up there, hold on a second. There we go. But look how bright and airy it is in here. So much room for activities. And look, you can also see outside of the giant glass dome that I made as well. I'm really liking how the glass is filling in here. And I think it is time for me to actually fully embrace it with this theme. And other than adjustments to the sniffer farm itself, I actually want to do another thing today. And that is over here, down on this piece of land right here. Uh, I've got a little bit of farmland already kind of in the build as it is but I think we need to amplify that a bit more today and I thought this zone could work really well for that in adding a whole bunch of brand new crops and farmlands that we can harvest and utilize and plus um if we look at this land properly it's also pretty ugly and I think if I tidy this up a little bit do a bit of terraforming that you know I all love I think we can really make this area beautiful just seeing this here and waiting to be terraformed is giving me that builder itch that I really, really need to scratch. So I'm going to do that today. And you know what? With all the plans laid out, it's actually time to bring back the track you all love and I'm going to face plant into a solid build session. We haven't had a crazy amount of time lapses this season, but it's time for another one. So go grab your popcorn, put your feet up and let's roll the time lapse. Hey, guess what? I finished all the building. But you also know what? It's Etho Tour time. But first, I want to go check out a path that Etho told me he made and see what he's done because I love me some paths. And it appears I have company at the front of my base. This is not a good place to be right next to a cat. 
please. The paths are slowly going in around the server, which have beautiful designs, and Etho told me no longer that he did just the same between his base and Tango's, and it looks like this is the start of it already. I just really wanted to take a look and see what he's done. Oh, first things first, by the way, the mushroom block on the path. My path doesn't have a mushroom block in it, but it's quite a lovely touch. I do like that he's kept the wheat farm as well. There was a wheat farm here he's gone through. He's used brick walls along this side too. Lovely leaves and flowers. Oh, this is quite pleasant actually. I love the additions of the brick to really support the, the landscape. Oh, it is used pitcher pods, the very thing I made my farm for. That is beautiful. And what's he done to the tunnel here? Oh, look at that. I love the berry bushes in the little, uh, kind of little garden segment there. And the tunnel. Oh, hello. A bit of, oh, it's a sheep farm. He's stung a sheep farm in the tunnel. Very nice. What colors does he got? Oh, gray wool. I like a bit of gray wool. Black wool, white wool, and green. Honestly, all very nice colors. I like that he's even used the tunnel as a bit of decor as well. Beautiful. I love it. Oh, and speak of uh, speak of the ether. Hi, ether. You've caught me sleeping. Hey, girl. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> looks like you got shot by an arrow recently too. Yeah, I had a pillager visit at my base oh, in my dear. front door. They came in knock and they did not ring the warden doorbell though, so therefore they're not welcome. I just wanted to have a look at what? your path. You told me you made it a little oh, bit okay. ago and I wanted to take a little snoop because I hadn't come up here yet. And I see you've even used the tunnels of sheep farm. That's really cool. I like I that. had to stuff these guys somewhere and it's like, you know what? I don't want to hear them. Uh -huh. This is the place right here. That's actually really smart. See, I've, I'm gonna make, I'm making my sniffer farm, right? And it's in my base, and it's going to be noisy. Yeah, that's that's gonna get annoying if you're close to it. <sighs> yeah. You know, it's fine. I'm not regretting or my you choices just turn, yet. You know, you, friendly mobs <laughs> go down. Easy fix. Yeah, but I have a note block that's gonna go off, you know, every now and again for the allays that I'm gonna put in there. So <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't exactly <laughs> silence that. <laughs> Unless you know a way. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, if you put a mob head on the note block, it'll still work and it, it doesn't play any sound. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah, cool. I, oh, I can put a sniff ahead. I tried on that it. out and it, it works. Oh, nice. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do that then. Absolutely. That, that was going to drive me insane otherwise. Um, But you know what? I. By the way, your path, beautiful. I love the addition of the mushroom oh, block. Thank you. It's That's actually really quite nice. The only thing I don't like about the mushroom block is the sound that it makes when you walk on it. The packed mud is such a nice it, sound. Really. It's a, yeah, pack mode is nice. Yeah, but then the mushroom block kind of sounds like wood instead. You know, like the oak, oak oh, planks. Oh, yeah, it does have the plank sound, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, but it looks great, and that's what matters. But I'm also wondering, you know, I've I've uh, I've done a few additions to, to my base, and it kind of borders around my path. I'm just wondering if you want to you wanna take a little gander, you know, if I can show you around a little bit. Oh, sure. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's go check it out. Come with me. What do you think about these brick things? Because I was a little I love them. iffy about them. I like You're okay it. With those? Yeah, no, they match like the color of the landscape right? As much as it's right, like the right. ready tint, it still keeps that kind of earthy vibe while still being a structural support. Wait, 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 hold on. Before we go to the path, hold on. I want to show you because I okay. talked to you the other day about not doing the back of my base. I didn't think I showed my oh, audience okay. that we had a little conversation there, but look, it's done. There's a back now. Are you, are you oh, proud of me? Okay. <laughs> I'm very proud, Pearl. <laughs> I'm going for a bit of a greenhouse vibe, and man. The glass it's roof. It's decorated back there and everything. It is. We can take. Oh well. I mean, what do, do you mean? The exterior, or the interior. Exterior. Like if you come from the backside of the the hill, it's not like a big blank wall, right? Uh, well, take, let's take a look. <laughs> like. <laughs> oh I'm, no. no. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a decent structure. Oh, Pearl. Well, oh, well, oh, terraforming. Terraforming, well, maybe. The, 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 or okay, another building. Okay. There's a reason. There's a reason why it's blank because there's gonna be more structures that I'll be adding onto it, right? So I don't want to yeah. decorate it when it's gonna be hidden later anyway. Sorry. I see B-dubs do this all the time where it's just a big blank wall and it's like, yep, yeah, another structure coming soon. <laughs> yeah, see, exactly. You get it. You get yep. it. But I kind of went a little bit more detail-y with the stairs, a little bit more intricate, and I wanted to put in the glass yeah. in this building, this little attachment, because I need the airiness for Solarpunk, you know? I need the, okay. I need the sun oh, to I like come through. I the floor through. in here, actually. This is cool. Thank you. All of this was moss before. Nice I, ripped, I ripped out all the moss and I'm going to shove my sniffers in the back. Did some daylight sensors as well. That doesn't go unnoticed. I did. Yes. We're trying. I'm trying to get my solar technology in with the solar punk. You know, mm -hmm. I need needed mm -hmm. more of that. People were like, Pearl, there's not enough daylight sensors in your base. And I'm like, OK, I got you. <laughs> so they do look very cool. Like, I like that texture. 
It does actually from underneath. Too. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. underrated blocks with bottom textures that can be used really well for roofs. I'm thinking I'm probably doing like an atrium in here. Is an atrium the right word? Plants? A greenhouse? Is that an atrium? At, at, What's an atrium? Atrium? Atrium. That sounds like atrium? trees, maybe. Atrium, yeah. Atrium? Yeah, yeah. So I kind of want to do... I think that's for trees. Yeah. I mean, well, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. That still kind of fits. I could be wrong. Yeah. I mean, it sounds about right. So I'm kind of thinking probably something like that in this area. I'm not doing the interior today. And some way of bringing water to the plants. Also very important. Pipes. Yes, or precisely. Buckets, that kind of stuff, like I the, think is a good thing to do too. The little sprinklers from the ceiling and stuff, right? Sprinklers, yeah. 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 Yeah, solar powered sprinklers specifically, all harnessing nature. You gotta get your tech in there too, you know, not just not just organics. Yes, 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 yes. I, look, I, I'll show you tech a little bit later down the line. You'll see what I've done. It was very okay. expensive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then yeah, and here I'm gonna put the sniffers in here, so they'll get a nice like open globe effect with the uh, nice that roof there. And this is the, look, this is my farm. <laughs> this is the the, the sniffer farm. <laughs> yeah, this is the sniffer farm. <laughs> Ignore Wait, me. are you doing leaf stone pearl? Am I seeing some leaf stone? I here? am doing leaf stone. Yes. Wow, <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, come down here then, eh? Hold on. Here's the underside. See, I cleaned it up a little bit now. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was horribly messy oh, in it was here. Very nice. So I stopped like with the path going all the way up. I curved it that way so I could make an exit out. And then I've just kind of yeah. added a roof on here. I know it's a bit more dark and dungy, kind of less solar punky. It's cozy but... though. I like this kind of stuff. And a very cool roof as again with the slabs <laughs> looking tough blocks. Thank you. I like my, my uh, what, what's the, is it technically corrugated roof? Is that what you call it? I'm throwing out all yeah, the words yeah. today, though. <laughs> and then in here, I changed the floor to smithing benches. And then there's the second half Very of my nice. uh, my leaf stone, as you call it now that I've learnt the word for. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh. You recognize this? I do. That uh, looks like a, a hopper clock if I've ever uh, seen one. It's a hopper clock. I haven't put the stuff in there yet because I want to get my lays <laughs> first. But uh, yeah, I'm going to run on about 16 birch planks worth of time. That should do it, I think. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. I, I've heard you're trying to learn redstone this season, Pearl. Yes, I am. Tango taught me a little uh, bit about how comparators work uh, earlier today. It was fantastic. So it's a bit ugly in here right now, but I'll make the interior later. It's fine. Is this a is this a automated cocoa farm? I, I forgot what you said. Yeah. Are there pistons connected this, to this? This is this is automated. It's automated when I use my axe on it. Look at that! It's all gone. <laughs> oh, Pearl. Look at that! It's gone. It's harvested. Oh, and oh, look at that! No. It's automatically planting. Wow, crazy! This is a good challenge for you. If there's room <laughs> for it, I'm not sure, but like, try get some pistons at below and above, uh -huh. and when they push up, it'll harvest the whole thing for you. Okay. All right. I might try. I mean, it's, I kind of just simple. chucked it here temporarily, but I, maybe I'll turn it into oh, something okay. official. I could do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Path. Path time. Path. 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 Path time. Let's yes. check out the path. Come, come, this is the whole reason I dragged you down here, is this section over here. I made some oh, new farm oh, wow. area. Wow, you did a lot. So you got some trees, you got fences, uh -huh. some water features. But the thing is, the trees, the big one, the fluffy ones in particular, they're apple trees, yep. but they're made out of berries and heads. Just don't look too closely <laughs> oh, at them. That is awesome. Yeah, you got uh, the berries on the moss. Yeah. Look like apples. I was That's like, great. I need to find a vanilla way to make apple tree, like apple trees. And I don't have to include the heads. I kind of just add a nice little detail to them. These trees have so much texture to them. Like they look, you know, that uh, texture pack people get where they make the leaves more. Uh, a little bit bushy. Full? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it almost looks like you got that effect without that Ooh, texture pack. I'm, I'm actually really happy about that because I always love the fluffy texture pack. Um, but, you know, I don't use it because I prefer to try the challenge in yeah. vanilla. So that, that means a lot. I think you nailed it pretty good here. Yay, thank you. You got the darker leaves at the bottom, the brighter ones at the top. Yes, I always love gradient, adding gradients to my trees, except this time I decided to use a bit of, um, uh, dub, dub, dub. hold on. Lichen. Lichen, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lichen this time to the trees, a little bit different. And of course, you know, the main part of the farm, everybody uses this, you think? Everybody uses uh, yeah. this. Everybody, right? Everybody's gonna use so, it. So, beetroot, you know, it doesn't get a lot of love in this game. It is kind of good for red dye. It is. It Honestly, it's a pretty crop. It's kind of a shame there's not enough to it do with really it. It looks really nice, too, yeah. Yeah, I was I, like... It's one of my favorite ones. 
goes well with my mangrove, man. I had, I had to use it. Okay, this is what I was saying with the uh, technology. See? See? Yeah? Beacons, mate. Okay, beacons. <laughs> beacons. Okay. So I feel like they kind of felt a bit more futuristic, right? And I'm For sure, yeah. imagining that they either kind of give some sort of solar infusion into the plants to help them grow, or they can be just lights. It really depends on how you see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a stretch, but okay, yeah, yeah. What do you mean a stretch? It's futuristic. It can be whatever you, you I want. I feel like it. you need some glowy particles around it if okay, you want okay. that. Okay, okay. That's where you look at this one that's actually running, you see? It's moving. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Very good, very good. It's totally moving. Imagine that glass is like a little, like, mm. bleh, you know, bleh, bleh, you know? <laughs> don't know what that noise is. Man, it's too bad. You know, like how end rods have that particle effect, the white one? Yeah. If you could somehow get that without the end rods. Oh. Yeah, no, that would be really pretty. I agree. And I got this over here. I got like a bit of a aqueduct type system. Pulling up the water into little tubes. Okay, solar powered. Exactly, right? solar powered. And then they run, they, like the, the solar power allows the water to be pulled upwards through a little tube. Imagine there's like a little glass, you know, pipe. Pulls it up yep. and then it brings it into all the crop fields and feeds the water. Oh, uh -huh. okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine some kind of technology that they would use in solar punk. The, okay, look, the bit that I'm proud of though, just come across my little bridge right here. I'm quite happy with my little bridge. But <laughs> I love these kinds of bridges <laughs> that are just trap doors. <laughs> they're just simple. Like they're so simple, but yeah. they, they look really good. And they, they feel good to cross too. Oh, cool. I you do. got uh, shape to it even. And yeah, I just added wow. a little bit on the bottom just to make it all quaint. Yeah. Give it the curve. Cause you know, when you attach fence gates to walls, they create that kind of, they yeah. poke slightly downwards. This is, this is my, my lovely piece that I am quite proud of, I think, unless I'm just delusional at this point. But let's just say it goes vroom vroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a seat in it too. Very cool. Uh -huh. It looks like a work truck, right? It, it does. is. It is. It's it's a solar it's again a solar powered work truck. Now I did originally make a version where it was like kind of hovering, and you would it was powered by water to then water the uh -huh. crops as it hovered over them. Um, but then I made it, I, I gave it a landing position. Technically it's still powered by water. It's got a little water source in the middle of the vehicle, but you know, um, you can imagine it however way you want it. This is, <laughs> it's my little it's farmer van. Cool. <laughs> this has so much character to it. I, I was doing this for so long trying to figure out the design for this thing. <laughs> But I'm actually quite proud of it. Do you want to know how to get yeah, up there? So cool. Yeah, you gotta go up the nose. <laughs> I there just you go. use a ladder here, right? Yeah. It has a bit of a second purpose because I do have an auto crafter in here. I just haven't put placed the blocks in yet. But what happens is when it goes nighttime, that auto crafter will trigger, and I want to put like just some planks in there to craft buns so that it tracks oh, okay. how many day night cycles go through when the chunks are loaded. Yeah, 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 yeah. As That's a bit a of a, a fun thing across the season and it, it makes it kind of functional, you know? I find like building vehicles is like way beyond me. Like I can't do this kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I would there's, have also said the so same thing. There's so much detail to it. <laughs> Well, this is this is me working on it for like several hours, right? This is me, twi you know, fiddling oh, okay. with blocks for ages. It's not something that I kind of was like, yeah, just here, 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 there you go. It, it's done. No, I was yeah. I was fiddling with this thing, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, but like, I mean, I would have said the same thing as you not too long ago because I hated building vehicles, especially cars. But it's really fun. Mm -hmm. you should give it a go. It's kind of like a redstone, but aesthetic instead I, I pretty much just wanted to show somebody what i've made essentially but i'm happy with my little area oh and i've got little coral over here too for a bit of color i think one other thing that would be kind of cool this season like yeah. we got these paths everywhere mm -hmm. is if we had like signposts with like pointing this is that ah. direction this is this direction at the intersections yeah kind of absolutely i mean i think we did that what in season eight i think we had signposts and stuff because we did a lot of horse riding mm -hmm. that season we definitely could do it again this season i think people are still using their horses enough oh i was gonna say something I mm -hmm. know, the apple trees yeah you could do like apples on the ground and in, in item frames yeah i was tempted to oh wait no the actual apples <gasps> yeah the actual apples in the game oh right? that's smart i didn't even think of that visible item frames yeah okay now i do i really do have to add those <laughs> <laughs> not not too many, just a few, you know. Just... Oh, what do you mean? I thought I could have apples everywhere. So I start like on the server. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. 
Uh, no, I totally have to do that now. Well, thank you very much for coming for a little bit of a tour, you know. <laughs> bit of time yeah, out of your day doing that. Me. It's like, what, 40-ish minutes worth of time, worth of your time? That's fine. I, that's what I'm here for, bro. <laughs> thank you. It's just It more does look really good. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm I'm actually really happy with it. It's just cozy. I gotta add those apples. I, I can't I can't not add the apple suggestion. That was such a good suggestion. And lucky for me, I have some apples spare. Beautiful. A little apple here. Doop. There we go. Cute. Maybe a little apple here. Maybe seeing as people are coming from this side, we'll add a few over this side. Boop. One here. Boop. Chuck one over by this tree, I think would be good. Boop. Another one here. Boop. And I think we're just missing some at this last tree over here. And then I think pretty much all the trees are covered to have at least a couple of apples on the ground. Boop. And here we go. We got a bunch of cute little apples on the ground. That was such a brilliant suggestion by Etho. I love it. But yeah, here we go. Overall, here is the new additions to my base. We had our tour with Etho, so I don't have to walk around it too much myself. But I'm honestly really, really happy with how this has come out. And I think walking down this path now is just going to be super, super pleasant. And also, if you turn around this way, look at that. We have a nice kind of funnel over towards Tango's base right there in between all the trees. I tried to place all the trees in a way that they did not block anything. Even if we go over towards Skizz's Pyramid or right over here there we go you can still see the bulk of my structure so you can see i created a separation between these bunches of trees so you could see through to my original starter base and then i don't have any big trees at covering the new attachment that we've done for our solar punk aspect as well and like you saw too i'm really trying to put some new technology into the base specifically the futuristic type of tech we've got a lot of solar panels going on and everything it doesn't have to be solar i mean that's a big part of solar punk but we're also going to focus a lot on the harnessing the power of nature aspect a bit further down the line too there is so much more room to add a whole bunch of different technological pieces that I'm very, very much excited about. Speaking of the sniffer farm, by the way, I do kind of have to admit and slightly mention that while I intended to go out on an adventure with you guys and go and get us some sniffer eggs, but I kind of have some already. I ended up finding these when I was out on a journey to find some caves to go diamond mining in. I came across a ruined area in a lukewarm ocean. I'm like, you know what? Why not? I'm here anyway. I might as well give it a go. And I got three sniffer eggs out out of it so that is absolutely brilliant to get our farm started and ahead of the game and i think it is the perfect time to get these guys hashed and would you look at that as well we have a bit of mail quick intermission to the sniffer egg hatching but actually right when i was just about to start building i actually saw that green was online and i'm like you know what we actually got mumbo's mailbox installed quite late last week and based off green's promise he said that if we get mumbo's mailbox installed then we'll get our permit for our stamps and that wouldn't be a problem any longer. So I ended up taking the opportunity to send Green a little bit of a mail with the stamps that he needed for our newly installed hermits for any that he was missing, plus a few extra bonus mumbo stamps and kind of butted him up with a bit of a notebook type of message from us in the hopes that we can get this permit thing going. And it looks like he's responded, so we're going to take a little bit of a look together as to what this is. Let's take a bit of a gander. Hello, hello. <laughs> of course, it's a mumbo stamp. The permit office will be open later just for you. Oh, that is amazing. See, now I've been told that the permit office tends to only like to be open on Sundays for like one hour. And even then, Green usually goes on a break for that one hour. So it looks like we have something very, very promising in our hands right here. Now, as much as this says the permit office will be open later for me, sadly, it's not going to be in this episode because we are very much running out of time and things just aren't quite ready yet. But we will definitely be finding out in the next video what will be happening with the stamp permit. Anywho, let's get back to the sniffer situation right here. Now, of course, as you saw, I have moved the area, the original intended area of the sniffers from downstairs to upstairs. We have the redstone down here, which will trigger a bit of on a bit of a timer. Let's see, I'll put down the birch planks. You chuck these in here, that starts our timer, which activates the piston and updates the leaf block so that the note block then goes off because I have an observer that is detecting the change in the leaves when the oak log is attached to them. 
So when that note block goes off upstairs, I'll be having a laze that'll be picking up the sniffer items and dropping it off at the note block as time goes on and when the sound is made. Right, let's get these guys hatched though. Hello, one, two, and three. That's probably going to take about 10, 15 minutes for these guys to pop out. But of course, as you might be asking, pal, where are your lays? Let's go solve that issue right now, shall we? We just need some amethyst shards, a music disc, and a little old jukebox. Thank you. I'll put that back later. And now if we fly around a little bit, I'm sure we'll find somebody that has an LA that we can just sneakily duplicate. Pretty sure there's one over here by gems. Just a bit of server lag. It's fine. At least I thought there was an LA around here. Ah, there it is. Found it. Hello, little buddy. How you doing? One little jukebox. Play a bit of music. Hello, buddy. You gonna dance? There we go. Beautiful. Then we click an the shot on it. And we have a second delay once he pops out of the corner. There we go. Hello. <laughs> oh, such a lovely tune as well. Well, see, now I need a lead so I can bring him back with me. But, you know, look at that. Easy. All right, lead quiet. Hey, buddy. You come back with me. You're in my little LA now. Let's go. <laughs> You're going to go to my sniffer farm. I have to say, I really appreciate my view coming in from this direction of the base. I don't know. I'm just really happy with it. Like, this is a theme I haven't, of course, done before. And it's also a, a little, like, the detailing is in a bit of a style that I also don't typically do in, in some forms, that is. I'm just overall really happy with the base. And I'm so excited to see it expand gonna be amazing. All right, hello sniffers, how we doing? We have one lovely LA to add to the farm and we're just gonna let him roam free. Now, I don't have any of the torch flower seeds or pitcher pods, so we'll just leave him empty-handed for now, but these guys have to hatch anyway. And then over time, I'll slowly duplicate this guy when he's ready to be duplicated again. Now it's time to sit here and wait for one of these guys to hatch. Ooh. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> I was just looking away off screen. Hi, hello. Coming to say hello. Oh my god. Oh boy. Well, hello, little ones. Okay, you're not going to sniff up anything for a while because you've also got to still become an adult. But you know, look at that. We got sniffer babies. We got a lay. We are so much closer to making our flower shop now. Oh, look at them. Aren't they adorable? Now, in regards to the shop, I also want to say that, well, for starters, we won't have time, unfortunately, to make it today. I've already done so much building as it is, so we'll be doing it that next week. But I've also heard that there is, you know, some flower farms on the server. And honestly, I kind of just wanted the permit to make a farm for these guys. I'm happy enough as it is, but our permit, after all, is all the dyes and flowers, and that's a little problematic when I only want to do, you know, a farm for these. And uh, if there's other farms on the server, maybe there are some deals that we can uh, we can make with some other hermits when it comes to that kind of thing. We'll see. But anyway, we're gonna hop out of this area and allow these guys to age and mature. We're gonna let this guy's duplication timer reset and we're just gonna hop out of here for now. With the farm now set up, I'm pretty much ready to go. Sadly, I think this is actually going to be time to end the episode for today. We've made the huge expansion to our base. We have collaborated on some redstone with Tango. We've participated in a dragon fight. I've been doing a bunch of male stuff behind the scenes and we're just all around feeling pretty good about the progress that's been happening lately. So, in such a case, I hope you all enjoyed watching what you have been watching today. Thank you very much for popping into my POV of Hermitcraft for this one. And you know what? I'll catch you all in the next one. I'll see you later, everybody. Goodbye. 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 Boop.